Hey there, this is Ian Perry, Solutions Specialist at Candrone. Our first video featured us in the field collecting data. The next video featured us importing our data and making some orthometric heights out of our ellipsoid heights with our GCP information. Then we went into PIX4D and imported GCP information to tag the photos and create some checkpoints. Now we're ready to go into QGIS and create a map using the DSM or digital surface model and orthomosaic that we've rendered. And before we get started in QGIS, I'm just going to go back into my GCP data. Remember I created this column for my orthometric heights. I'm going to copy this column and I'm going to go over to my simplified version of this and replace those ellipsoid heights. This is where we want to have ellipsoid heights because they look a little bit more normal as positive values above sea level. When we've saved those, we're ready to start a new project in QGIS. Starting out down here on the right, I'm just going to go over to this ES, EPSG and I'm going to choose the UTM zone 10 that our data set will ultimately be um, shown in. Now I'm going to start to import some data. So now that we've got our coordinate reference system set up for our Q project, I'm going to go into the folder structure that came out of PIX4D and you can see the number three folder where we'll find our ortho mosaic and our digital surface model. So the first thing I'll drag in is my TIFF file for the ortho mosaic. So I come in here and the first thing I want to do is just inspect this ortho and make sure that it rendered nicely. Topography here in the field is quite interesting and we've got a lot of open water here, which is something I'm going to want to highlight in my map output. So first things first, having processed my ortho with some checkpoints, um, we do have a quality report from PIX4D and we can pull that up and check how well this ortho mosaic did. Now remember I made some uh, checkpoints for PIX4D to use and we can read how well those checks did in the quality report from PIX4D but that's not a very visual way of inspecting the accuracy of this ortho. Instead what I like to do is import those ground control points I took with my MLID rover and look at them visually over top of the ground control targets out in this field. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer and that's going to come in the form of a delimited text layer. As you remember, I simplified my CSV containing my ground control points and I added orthometric heights. Now, as with PIX4D, I have to specify which fields are which with the easting in field one, with the X field, northing in field two, the Y field, and the elevation in field three. Make sure that my coordinate reference system matches that of my project. And then I scroll down and I make sure that this file looks good as it comes in to my project. Something that might be important here is to change these field types to integer. And it's also important to check off that the first row indicates field names. So the software doesn't think that I'm trying to project that data onto the map. I press apply and you can see that my ground control point now appears in my map. So I can take this measurement tool in the top and I can measure from the point that I've just imported, my rover point, and see the distance to the middle of my ground control target from my field. And I can see here that I'm just under two centimeters off. I close that and I go over to the next target and do the same thing. Something I'm noticing right off the bat that I'm not too happy with is the color. For me, I need a little bit more contrast. So I go into properties and I go into symbology and I change the color of these ground control points to something brilliant like yellow and I apply that and now I can see that they are much much more visible. I can also go in and change the shape of this mark to something that stands out and is a little bit louder for the purposes of making our map. There that's looking pretty good I like those 
So I'm gonna go back down and measure two more distances. That one's very close, I can tell. I don't need to worry too much about this. So I'm very happy with how the Mavic 3E with the RTK rendered the uh, ortho mosaic. As I can see, I've imported the GCPs independently into the uh, QGIS software and overlaid those points uh, and the ortho mosaic to see in a very visual sense to see how good the accuracy of this ortho is. All right, so the next step is to import the digital surface model, which is gonna give me, in this case, a lot more information about the topography, namely these uh, water bodies that have accumulated here in the field. So go back into my folder structure and I just pull up the file for the digital surface model. And like before, I look for the TIFF and I just drag that right into my project. Now what I see here at first is something that doesn't look all that appealing. It just looks like a lot of black and gray. So I go into properties and I see that the render type is just a single band gray. I'm gonna change that here to Hillshade. Now, if I press apply before closing the window, you can see that right away there's a really, really excellent texturization taking place here, which really sort of highlights the low-lying areas of this field where water is accumulating. Now, I can change the azimuth um, to actually bring out those depressions uh, a little bit more so. And the azimuth just sort of controls the direction from which light would be shining to kind of bring out the texture. So something else you can do in this menu with QGIS is contours. And say I wanted to bring this down to about 50 centimeter. Now I can see contours. They, they also highlight this uh, this landscape and its different elevations that cause water pooling. But I think for the purposes of this, I'm going to stick to my hillshade. I think that my farmer is going to get a little bit more information out of that, especially if I overlay it with the ortho map with a bit of a transparency. Now, I did sort of change my mind a little bit about those contours. I really do like them. So what I'm going to do is grab a, another copy of that DSM. I'm going to pull it into this project. I'm going to call this DSM Contours. And I'm going to rename this one to uh, DSM Hillshade. And under the contours version, I'm going to go into my contours. I'm going to restyle them to 50 centimeter interval. And I'm going to put a bit of a fatter line into place here, something like that. And as I apply that, you can see that that comes up quite nicely. Now it's important that you order these layers so that you can see them all in your map. And so I've got my ground control points over top of my digital surface model hillshade, but I also want to see my contours. So I'm going to bring my contours up on top of the hillshade there. That's quite nice. Now I also want to see my ortho mosaic. So I'm going to bring that up a little higher as well in my hierarchy. Now I want to create a transparency so that I can still see my hillshade underneath. I go into properties and into transparency and I take that transparency down to about 35%. And so as you can see what that does is it really brings out a bit of the color of the water which is what I'm trying to see in my map. I also want to see my hillshade a little bit better so I'm going to go in and I'm going to bring up the brightness of, or bring down the brightness of my hillshade and apply that. So now I'm happy with all of my layers and their ordering and the transparencies and so on. There's one last thing I wanna to do to make this a little bit more presentable and that is I'm gonna clip to an extent that uh, makes the most sense to me. 
So I'm gonna go to layer, again, create layer, new shapefile layer. And I'm just gonna call this Fort Langley Farm Clip. The geometry is going to be a polygon. Once again, I'm going to take into account the coordinate reference system we've been working in all along. And I'm just gonna call this Clip. And I go over here to my add polygon feature and I get this little crosshair. Now I can actually click around my map area to grab only the parts of all of these layers that I want to ultimately bring into my final map. Now we've clipped all of our layers to the extent that we're interested in and we've got this nice Google satellite background. I'm ready to create my map. So I go into project and I head on down to new print layout. And I just name this Fort Langley map. And I press OK. So a new window pops up and this is where you begin to bring in your canvas extent. So I'm going to go ahead and add map. Now if at any time I want to change the appearance of the map, I actually go into the other window into my canvas and I make all the changes happen in here. So with my contours, for instance, if I want to darken those up, I'm going to go back into the option for contours. Now let's bring in some map components. First thing I want to do is bring in a north arrow. And a ruler bar. Those are looking good. I also like this little tool add attribute table. I can simply pull in my control points and I'm going to grab the corners and pull them over to the side here. As you can see, I've got my name, my easting, my northing and my elevation and orthometric heights. Now I also want to drag in just a little text box so I can make some notes. So I add this text box layer here. And over here I can edit the information. So I'm going to say what coordinate system we're in. It's WGS 84 slash UTM zone 10 north, like that. Now remember we took note of some information from our Natural Resources Canada website where we convert ellipsoid heights into orthometric heights, including the vertical datum. So I'm going to include that information in my map now. I think I'm rather happy with that. Now, last but not least, we need a legend. Go ahead and pull a legend in here. Now there are a lot of options in here. I'm going to actually take the majority of this information out and highlight multiple options at once and subtract them out until you're simply left with the pertinent information. Now I can go in here and actually rename this, so I'm going to call this uh, ground control. Now I'm actually going to specify what these marks consist of as we took the targets with us when we left the field, but we did leave some pins in the ground. So I'm going to specify the plastic stakes. There you have it. We have a data set coming off of our Mavic 3E and our Rover and Base by MLID. We've been out in the field collecting ortho imagery and ground control points. We brought our data into this desktop. We made some orthometric heights from our ellipsoid height data. We processed an orthomosaic and digital surface model in PIX4D and we brought those data sets here into QGIS to create an informative model that highlights the low-lying areas of this farmer's field where water is pooling. You can see our final map output here uh, includes an ortho photo, digital surface model and contours all of which are layered appropriately with transparencies to allow us a look at all of the layers stacked atop one another. I'm really happy with how this Mavic mapped this farm. I can definitely say I'll be using this drone system to do all future small-scale agricultural mapping projects. 
uh, we have done a great job here and I think this farmer is going to be happy with the data set. If you like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content. If you have questions about this process or any others, feel free to reach out to us. We'd be happy to help.